Okay, we are in period three. All right, so we will get started here in a few minutes with my period three financial algebra. Oh yeah. So. Set up here. And that's what I want to do. Hmm. Uh, we're good to go. Uh, so, period three financial algebra, section one dash two, ready to go. Where are you guys? So, let me see, we need to ask a question of the day. What is the question of the day? Okay. So we have some students. All right. Good morning, guys. Melina, Madeline, Kylie, how are we doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. I appreciate that. So today we're going to start off the class as, as we have everybody coming on in here to uh, what has been the most challenging thing uh, learning online. So why don't you guys start typing away here as people uh, uh, come on in as I admit everybody in class. We have a huge class. We have 36 people here. So what has been, I want to know what has the most challenging thing been uh, learning online? Because I know it's been challenging for me, you know, teaching online because it's, you know, obviously way different and I have to learn all kinds of new technology like you guys. Uh, so there's challenging things on both sides of the fence. So start typing away so that everybody can uh, see, see the responses here. And I'll, I'm just going to read your guys' comments and uh, as we have more and more students coming on in. Okay. So Kylie can't figure out how to download the PDFs. Oh, you mean, do you mean download like the uh, notes uh, that I have online, Kylie? Okay. So you know what I can do is when I, when I share my screen today, uh, you're going to, you're going to need those notes. So I will go to Canvas and I'll show you that. Okay. Um, I also can't figure out how to upload my homework. Okay, so if that's the case, then I want you to stick around uh, at the end of class because I'm not going to take the entire two hours today. And then you and I could go over um, the methods that we could use to do that, okay? Because you're going to have to do that for each section. So stick around at the end of class and we'll discuss that, okay? Fair enough. Mr. Ainsworth? Yes, sir. Uh, for, the, for the first couple of questions that you assigned, mm -hmm. like on that too, I had some like problems with them. I, some of them I didn't really understand. Okay. Me too. Okay. Well, I expect that, you know, so don't worry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lead off with an example. Um, and then after we do our example, we can go to questions one, two, three. And then if you have additional questions after I lead, lead something, then we can definitely do some more work together. Sound like a good plan, Jonathan? Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay. So let me, uh, post the question of the, the morning here of the, of the day because I found out that if I put the message in uh, in the chat early before you guys get in, then when you come in, you can't see it. So I want everybody to answer this question here first. Uh, what has been the most challenging thing learning online so far uh, this uh, first two weeks? So and then I, I'm just going to be reading the chat here and taking a look at what you guys um, what you guys tell me here. So start typing away here. Uh, or you can uh, turn on your mics if you like. If you're not the typing type, like I'm not the fastest typist in the world, <laughs> uh, then, then you can just turn on your mic and just talk to me. Okay, that's fine too. 
So Matthew uh, says not being able to see the boys. Uh, are you talking about your friends, Matthew? Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. You know, I, I feel the same way about my colleagues and also my family. I haven't seen my dad is, since last December because uh, he, he's 76 now and he is uh, really trying to protect himself and his wife because they're at that age that they're really susceptible. So I, I, I miss them. I miss my colleagues working with them. I, I don't get together with them very uh, often. You guys turn on your videos too so I can see you please. Um, and again, the question right now, as we are trying to get everybody in, in the classroom here, uh, is to uh, tell me in the chat so everybody can see it, what has been the most challenging thing online? So uh, let's see here, let's read. So Matthew said he can't see the boys as friends. I understand that. Riley says teachers keep forgetting to post homework. <laughs> Does that include me, uh, uh, Riley? <laughs> okay. Uh, if I ever forget to open something up or do something, Riley, you keep me on track, okay? You be my my checker. All right. So yeah, that's so you know, hey, uh, email your your teacher and say, hey, put that up there. So you can get started on it because nothing nothing's worse than like having like a ton of homework at the same time let me see uh hannah says not having connection when in zoom yeah that that gets frustrating too so uh i i put out a uh, message through our mind just a minute ago just uh some people are, are still having to, uh, problems logging into canvas and if you can't get into canvas well you're gonna have a hard time getting into zoom so for the first few weeks here, I'll be sending out the links also in Remind. I did that earlier, if you check your Remind. And you should check your Remind too, by the way. So Hannah's uh, frustrated with connection problems. Uh, Mia's is getting into Canvas, getting used to going into Canvas and turning assignments. Yeah, that's huge. Because, you know, usually, you know, if we're in person here, uh, with the exception of English, let's say, because they still, they've been using the, you know, turn it in online for a while. Uh, but if for mathematics classes, you know, you turn in, you do everything on paper and pencil, and now I'm asking you guys to convert it to a PDF. And if you guys have difficulty converting to a PDF, you stick around after a session today, and I will talk to you about that. We'll, we'll, we'll go over that again. Uh, let me see. Priscilla said bad internet connection. Yeah, that's, that's frustrating. So you might have to, Priscilla, you might have to consider maybe going to, um, you know, a location that has better internet. Uh, or a friend's house or a, a family member's house that has better internet. So consider that. Um, let's see, Jonathan, the most challenging thing is getting used to how to, yeah, how to turn in assignments. Uh, and then also having trouble with Wi-Fi. That's the problem with online because it is, uh, it's dependent upon the internet. It depends on your, your Wi-Fi and everything. Let's see here. Let me just read a few more here. So. Uh, Adriana said getting the work on. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, you know, th the reason why I only assign a few problems is because, you know, first of all, I ask you to watch a video that takes time. And then I ask you to start the start the student workbook. So you give it a best shot. A few people, I think Jonathan and a few others said, hey, you, you had difficulty on the problems. No big deal. At least you attempted it. Right. And then you come here to, with me and you start working with me and I will help you out. So the whole point is getting started and getting your feet wet. And then when you're with me, I will obviously help you out because that's my job. Okay, uh, let me read on a little bit further here. Not seeing my friends, family and friends. Uh, yeah, I talked about that. That is, that's, that's serious, you know? And then some teachers uh, using Google Classroom and most using uh, Canvas or maybe, or Zoom like I am. So uh, yeah, I'm not using the Google Classroom like last year. Uh, I'm using Canvas because that's going to be the way of the future. So and not only that, a lot of colleges uh, use Canvas too. By the way, raise your hand if you're going to college. I want to see you guys. Oh, a lot of people. Okay, so depending on where you go, a lot of colleges use Canvas. My son used Canvas last year for uh, Palomar, and uh, his girlfriend has been using uh, Canvas as well. So if you get used to it this year as a senior, then you're going to transition a lot easier. Okay, and then let me see, David said, having a lot to do, a lot of work to do while the technology is slow. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating. And, and then Mondo Mondo, the, is the audio kind of quiet? So am I, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. 
that's not everybody. Can you hear me okay? Uh, well, yeah. Okay, so some of you guys gave me a response. Try to stay in there. All right, so let's uh, let's get started here. I always like to ask question of the day first, you know, and allow you guys to ask questions as well. Let me get ready here for what we're about to do. Okay, so I'm just putting the chat over here on the side so I can see you guys and then we'll get started here. Okay, just give me a second here while I adjust everything. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna get started. Now to participate today, obviously you have to have a calculator. So have your notes, three things, notes, student workbook and calculator out and as we practice. Okay, and I'm going to switch cameras because the uh, I have to put my computer down in order to uh, work with you guys. So the video is going to change slightly, but you're going to still be able to hear me and see me as we work on it. So get ready to go. You're going to have to have your notes ready, your calculator, because so I'm going to call upon you guys for your your um, your results. Uh, I'm going to be using the TI-84 to work with us here, and then you guys use whatever calculator you have. If you, if you guys are using uh, Desmos on your phone, that's fine. If you use Desmos uh, on your computer, that's fine. But you're going to need it, so get ready to go. Like I said, if you're using your computer, open up a tab and, and boot up Scientific, uh, the Desmos Scientific, like I'm showing you here, or... Like I said, have your calculator uh, side by side. Okay, so let's get ready to rock. And I'm looking at all you guys up here on my main. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. I can see everybody. And it looks like we're ready to start. We are missing, gosh, seven people. That's not good. Okay, so I'm going to start with number six. Okay, I know Jonathan, you asked questions on numbers one, two, and three. I'm going to go back to that. Okay, so at, when I'm done with number six, uh, Jonathan, I want you to remind me that we need to go back to numbers one, two, or three, whatever you have questions on. And then, so I want you to be the leader on that. Uh, and then we'll go back to your, your questions on one, two, and three. Okay, so get ready for number six. Here we go. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready here. Okay, so uh, I took number six and I just clicked it out to make it a little bit easier to see. So let's go through it here together. So let's read it first, and then of course uh, we'll go for it. Now, by the way, this number six, I picked number six because this is like, it contains everything you pretty much need to know in the entire lesson. So this is a pretty much a good example of a typical test question or a quiz question. So T, T, TQ, uh, just put that in your margin as possible test question or, or something like that. All right, so let me see. Tasa lives in a major city and her employer pays for a round trip taxi cab, let me just enlarge it a little bit here, uh, pays for her round trip taxi cab fare, so let's just annotate a little bit, for home to work each day. She must keep receipts for each trip and then turn them in at the end of each month for reimbursement. By the way, this is a typical thing in, in when you get out of a job. Okay, that happens all the time. Uh, the fares are based upon distance and time, so they change each day due to traffic, construction, weather, and other factors, and below is a ordered list Thank God it's ordered. Okay, of her round trip fares, these are fares for the 23 days in August. So right there, circle the 23 and it's 23. We have 23 fares that we need to take a look at. Now, what might come in handy are your notes. So let's go to your notes on section uh, two. I think these are your notes. Yeah, these are your notes. Okay, and if you if you don't have your notes out every session, I would change your habits because I was talking about this with my other class. I would always have three things out. I would have your notes side by side with your student workbook and your calculator. Those three things every single session. And the reason being is because guess what? You, you take notes for a reason and we're gonna need them. So everybody, if you have your notes handy, turn to this one here, your first major example. This is the one that you need to refer to. So when you do all your work in this section here, this is the main slide in the lesson that you can refer to because it has everything about frequency, cumulative frequency, relative, fre it has everything. Okay, so have that open and then refer to that as you need it. 
Okay, so the first question is find the percentile rank. Okay, and you have to understand, let's go back to your slide here, is that percentile rank is the same as relative cumulative frequency. It's the last column in the example. So let's write that down. So relative cumulative all right, frequency. That's percentile rank. And because of that, you pretty much have to design a full table with all your data. So what looks like a simple question is really not. So we have to do a full-on frequency table for this set of data. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the fares first. So I'm going to put fare here. Just to go ahead and uh, you're going to have to set up your own table. You know, I'm digital and I've already worked on this, so I already had my table set up. And what we want to do is have the frequency next, so frequency here. And then we're going to go relative frequency. We'll just kind of follow the order of our example in our notes. And then cumulative frequency. Again, I'm following the notes that we went through in le the second lesson here. And then the last one, the important one right here, let's pick a different color for it. Okay, and that's going to be relative cumulative frequency. So relative cumulative all right, frequency. So you have to get a table set up. And if you don't have enough room in your student workbook, well, what you could do each day, uh, and there's another suggestion, is have additional paper out or graph paper out so that you can have more area to work with here instead of just trying to shove it in the margin, okay? So get ready to work through here. We're going to, uh, I'm going to get you guys involved and I'm looking at you. <laughs> I can see everybody on my big screen. So um, get ready to participate. Uh, give me a second here. I've got more people coming in. That's good. All right. Okay, so very important to get here on time. So first of all, because uh, you have to know where I'm at. So I'm glad you guys have showed up there. But go ahead and open up your student workbook, go to number six, and here we go. Okay, so let's uh, write down the first fare. And thank God it's ordered so it's a little bit easier to interpret. So the first fare is a $23 fare. So here we go. So $23 fare. Okay, and we want to write down the frequency. How many times does it occur? So everybody give me a physical response. Put your hand up, one hand up. Let me see it. One hand up. Give me how many times does $23 fare occur? Okay. I'm only seeing a few people here. Yeah, some of you guys are saying twice. And so what I suggest you do is cross them off. So one, two, and it occurs twice. Frequency is the number of times it occurs. Okay. So the next one is a $24.25 fee. So $24 and a quarter. So 25, 24 and a quarter, basically. All right, and we count them off. How many times do we have, how many fares of $24.25 do we have? Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Very good, and a few others here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it occurs five times. And notice that in the data set there, I cross them off as I go uh, to keep track of things so I don't make any mistakes, uh, or at least try not to make a mistake, okay? The next fare is $24.75, so $24.75. Okay, and, and we it only occurs once. Okay, and you just keep on doing this. You write down how many fares of that type you have. And that's the first thing you do in a frequency table. So a frequency meaning the number of time it occurs. So the next uh, fare is a $25.50 fare. From we're going from low to high here. And then so how many times does it occur? What do you guys see? Tell me how many, what's the frequency on that? There we go, Elijah. Very good. Six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then $25.60. So the, the fares are increasing depending on the time of day, the distance, and all kinds of factors. Okay. Construction, weather, that happens. It depends on the demand. That's a typical thing. Okay. By the way, if you're, uh, I'm, I'm looking at your chat too and who's coming in. If you guys have questions, uh, let me know. Let me see. We can hear you, but it's just a little bit muffled. Hmm. Let me check my audio settings. So, uh, let me try this phone.
Okay, does, is that any better? Can you guys hear, is that any better on that? Okay, thanks for telling me. If, if any weird things come up tech-wise, tech just keep on speaking up and let me know. I'll try to adjust things, you know, to make a better experience for you guys. Okay, so let's go back here. How many times, how many fares of that type do we have? Yeah, okay, some of you guys are giving me responses. Thank you, Kendall, and a few others. So we have one fare of that type, so we cross it out as we go. And then we have a, a fare of $25.75 here. Uh, it looks like only one there. It looks like only one. And then how many, we have a $25.80. So the fares are increasing here. We have one, a two, a three of them. We have three of them there. And then the next highest fare is $25.90. We have only one, two, just two of them two of them there. And then the last fare, the most expensive fare is $25.95. Okay, so we're writing down how many fares we have of each type. That's the number of. So a number of each. That's called frequency, how many times it occurs. Okay, now we're going to talk about relative frequency, and this is where you guys are going to come in. I'm going to call upon uh, different people on this one, so get your calculators ready <laughs> on this one. So relative frequency, um, we need to take the frequency and divide it by the total. So let's write down the total here. The total number of uh, fares is 23. So let me just note it down here. So 23 total. There's 23 fares in all. If you add up all the frequencies, you get 23. And then, you know, of course, you have to take the frequency and divide it by the total. So your first frequency, relative frequency, excuse me, is two divided by 23. Okay, and here we go. Everybody start calculating ahead of me. All right, I'm just gonna go around the room randomly here and and see, you know, see what you guys are getting. And there's a lot of you guys that have the videos off. If you really want me to get to know you and everything, I would suggest you turn them on. That way also I know that you are actually participating. Uh, that would be good. Okay, so here we go. Let's get started. Uh, Kylie Newman, how about the first one here? Which, oh, by the way, let's round it to uh, uh, the nearest thousands. So let's look at the fourth digit of the decimal and round the third. So uh, Kylie, Kylie Newman, what are you getting for two, two divided by 23? Um, 0 0.087. Okay, all right. So two divided by 80, not 83. I didn't mean that. 23, sorry. Okay, so I agree with you. So 0 0.087. Notice that we look at the fourth digit, which is a nine. We round up the six to a seven. So 0 0.087. So 0 0.087. Very good. Let's keep rocking. The next one's going to be five divided by 23. All right. Just keep on working at your own pace over there. Cameron, what, what are you coming up with that, please? Cameron? I got point two one seven. There you go, 0 0.217, very good, so 0 0.217. Everybody start working ahead of me at your own pace. Okay, I'm gonna give you a few seconds here. Go ahead and finish the, the third column there on relative frequency. This is the frequency divided by the total, okay? That's how you calculate the relative frequency. So everybody work ahead and complete that column, and then I'll go around the room. So I'm kind of old fashioned. I, I believe in that we learn by doing, and that's why there's a lot of, a lot of, of this, what we're doing right here is that I give you guys time to work things out. Uh, we actually do it together simultaneously uh, in class. We're gonna do this all the time. That way you guys get uh, the chance to actually calculate. And then believe it or not, I think after we go over like a main example like this, uh, we'll see, Jonathan. We'll go back and take a look at one, two, and three. But maybe you might answer the questions that you have. So you let me know at the end. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, once you take one, one divided by 23, would you come up with that, with that one? I got uh, 0 0.043. There you go. All right. 0 0.043. Very good. So 0 0.043, okay, and then 620, 
six divided by 23. Let me uh, go to uh, Xavier. What'd you get for that one, please? Uh, for six divided by 23, I got point twenty six zero. Okay, that, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, let's round it to the nearest thousand. So you see that eight, look on, the, on my calculator. Always look at the fourth digit and round the third one to the nearest thousands. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna round it to point two six one. But you're, you're on the right track. Okay, so point two six one. Next one is one divided by 23. These are gonna be the same. All right, here, and let's go to uh, ooh, Melina. What'd you get for that one? For which one? Uh, one, the, the one, look on my screen, one, one divided by 23. Oh, um, 0 0.43. Okay, there you go. Thank 0 .043. you. 0.043. Yeah, very good. Thank you. So point, point zero four three, point zero four three. those are the same. Uh, and then the next one, three twenty-thirds here. Let's go to Mondo. What'd you come up with, pal? Uh, I said point one three. Okay, very good. So point one three. Okay, and then we already know this one here. So point zero eight seven, just look above. All right, so... Um, as we go through examples here, through, and this goes for every lesson here, if you have questions, my friends, just go ahead and jump right in, okay? Don't, don't hesitate, don't be quiet, just jump right in, turn on your mic and ask away. Okay, cumulative frequency. Now, cumulative frequency, cumulative means that you're going to be adding up as you go, so let's write that down, add as you go, and it refers to this one here. Cumulative, if you, if you accumulate something, you're adding things up over, over time. So the first frequency is two. So I'm gonna put a two here. And then the next one's five. So I have to add five. So I'm gonna say plus five, which is obviously seven. The next frequency is one. So I have to add one and get eight. So I'm adding the frequencies as I go. And I should end up with 23 when I'm done because I know that there's 23 fares. So, uh, the next frequency is six, so add six. The next frequency is one, so add one, so to 15 here. And then add one more to 16, and then add three to 19. Again, these are just, I'm adding the frequencies here. And then add two more to get 21, and then I better get 23 if I add two, and I get my final, and I get 23. Okay, this right here should match this. These are the same. Mr. Ainsworth? Yes. For 1 over 23, I got 0 0.044. Oh, really? So let me, let me check that, okay? Okay. Um, oh, okay. So 1 divided by 23. Okay, so take a look at the, you see the calculator up top? Or up on the screen here? The four digits of 4. So we'd round that down and not up. So you're calculating correctly. We just got to round it to the nearest thousands. Does that make sense? Talk to me, does it make sense? Right. I forgot I was muted. <laughs> but okay. the one before the four is a seven, and then make four a five, and then make three a four. Oh, okay, but you only round once. So you just when I see nearest thousands, which is the third digit, the third decimal place, you look at the fourth ones, which is a four, and you just, round down and chop it off basically and get 0 0.043. So round only once. Okay. Did, Riley, are you good with that or? Okay. Okay, now relative cumulative frequency. Here we go. So what we wanna do now is add up the relative frequencies. So let me, I'm gonna put this one in red. So this one here depends on this one. Here we go. So the first relative frequency is 0 0.087. That's the first relative frequency. And again, just like the cumulative frequency, we add as you go. We do the same thing here, but we add the relative frequencies. So the, the fifth column here depends on the third column, is what I'm saying. So I have to add here, I have to add the next relative frequency, which is point, uh, 0.217. So let's get our, go to a calculator here. I'm gonna clear it out. 
enter in 0 0.087. You guys should be working with me simultaneously here. And then, because I'm not going to do this, you guys are going to do this uh, for me. And we're going to add the next frequency, which is 0 0.217. All right, so uh, David, can you help me out there? What, what are you coming up with? David, can you hear me? You can you can type it in uh, the chat if you want, or you can just um, uh, turn your mic on. One of the two. David Gonzalez. We're not communicating too well. Do uh. Are you guys not hearing me here? Okay, so let me, let me, we're being a little hesitant here. Will, can you help out? He said it in the chat. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I didn't see that. Thank you, David. Okay. Yeah, no worries. No worries, David. I got you. So be careful on your, on your decimal there uh, because 0 0.087 and 0 0.217 should be still a decimal. So be careful right there. So point, point three zero four. Point point three zero four. Again, we're adding the relative frequencies as we go. So I have to add point uh, zero four three. So plus point zero four three here. Well, I'm going to give this one to you. So what's what's uh, what's the next frequency that we have? Oh wait, I think I did it wrong. I well, just look at my calculator here. I'm taking point zero three zero point three zero four and adding point zero four three. Just add those two up and let me know what you get. Oh, wait. Uh, point four three or point three four seven. There we go. Thank you. So 0.347, and now the next frequency is 0.261. Again, everybody's eyes should be focused in on these numbers here in yellow. We're adding these numbers here. That's where I'm getting these numbers here. So let's, let's continue. So the next one is 0.261, so we have to add that in, 0.261. So we just go plus 0.261. So you just, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Hang on, I forgot to hit the enter button. Okay, so you always hit enter and then plus 0 0.261. Uh, and then we got go on, I'll, I'll do this one here. So we get um, 0 0.608. So we got 0 0.608. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if I'm making sense right now. If you understand where, the, where, where I'm getting all the, okay, good. Okay, so. You guys jump in if you have questions anytime. So next one here, the next relative frequency is 0 0.043. So I have to add that, 0 0.043. Damien, I'm going to give this to you. So we have, uh, we have to add 0 0.043. What are you getting? Let me know when you're ready, Damien. Uh, 0.651. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I agree with that. So we got point, point 0.651. Now the next frequency is the same, so we have to add another 0.043. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, jump in. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, um, but I was just wondering if like you use the cumulative frequency, can you just divide those numbers like individually by 23 and still get the answer or no? Uh, well, you divide it by 23 to get the relative frequency, but you don't want to do that again to get the relative cumulative frequency because cumulative means like this part here, this, this, these words right here, relative cumulative frequency means that you got to take the relative frequencies on the previous column, not the previous one, but the third column here and add them up one at a time and you're getting a running total. Okay. 
No, so it's a little bit different than what you said. Okay, got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so we have to add that together. And let me see, 0.651 plus another 0 0.043. And we're getting 0 0.694. We're getting closer to one. We should be getting closer to one. I don't know if you guys remember that in the lesson, but we should get one at the bottom, okay? Uh, at the table here, so 0 0.694. Okay, and we're getting close. We're, we're almost there. Now the next relative frequency is 0.13. So we have to add that. Okay, so how about uh, Alyssa? Uh, I can see you working up there. So what, what are you getting for the next one? I got um, 0.824. Right, very good, thank you. So 0 0.824 and then the next Frequent, relative frequency is 0 0.087, so we have to add that. Then, uh, Michael, uh, are you there? What, do you, what are you getting if you add uh, 0 0.087 to that? Michael Sparks, are you there? Oh, there we go. So, but I'm asking you to calculate here. You should be working with me, Michael, okay? See, that's, that's what I'm worried about. I need you guys to be working working with me here. So, uh, Kendall, I know you're with me here. So what are you coming up with that one? Um, for that one, I got 0 0.911. Uh, Michael's is answering the chat. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Michael. So, so Kendall, Kendall, you agreed with Michael. Michael agrees with both of you. We're all agreeing. So thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, go ahead. Frequency divided by the total, like for that column and get the answer. Because that's how I did it originally. Oh, two, like so say it again. Yeah, two divided by 23, then seven divided by 23, then eight, and then 14. And it gave me the answer. Yeah, that's oh. what I was doing. Oh. Yeah, I think so, Charlie, was that your question earlier? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's how I did it originally, too, and I got the same answers. Okay. The, did I go back? I misunderstood your que original question, Charlize, and but the answer is yes on both of both you guys. So, I apologize. I just didn't get it the first time. You're totally good. It's okay. Yeah, but both of you guys are totally correct on that. So, if you want to continue doing it that way and take your running, your cumulative frequencies and divide each one by 23, then go for it. Okay, there's obviously two different ways you can do it. So very good. And then when you add the last one here, you know, 23 divided by 23, obviously you get one. So, and this should be one. Okay, Oop, one. So one meaning 100%. They should, all these decimals should add up to one or the percentages should up to 100%. So, okay, so we, we went up, to, we, we found, we talked about two different ways to get it. We could add as you go, or you can divide each of the cumulative frequencies by the total down here 23 so thanks for bringing that up i appreciate that good job okay now let's we did that for a reason so these relative cumulative frequencies let's put a big bold up top here uh this is percentile rank another name for that is percentile okay rank we need to talk about that because that was a discussed in the lesson here so let's go to question a and i'm going to put the responses up here and or have a little bit more space. The percentile rank for the fare of 2550, and then we have to interpret what it means. So what is the percentile rank? So let's highlight it. Let's, let's go, let's pick a color here, like green. Okay, let's find 2550, and it's right here. And the decimal, the relative cum cumulative frequency, or the percentile rank is the same. It says 0.608. So the question is, is what's, what's that as a decimal? So 0 0.608, what is that as a, well, not as a decimal, as a percentage? Can someone tell me that? What is 0 0.608 as a percentage? 60.8%. Okay, how'd you get that? That's correct. I just moved the decimal over twice, or like you can multiply by 100. Yeah, you, yeah, both are correct. Okay, so very good. So this is 60.8%, uh, and that's approximately equal to 61%. But now we says interpret, underline that word, 
is we're going to be doing that a lot. Like, what do these numbers mean? So if a $25, $50 fare is in the, it has a percentile rank of 61%, what in the world does that mean? And if you're not sure, then you go back to your lesson. So you take up your notes and you go back and you look for percentile rank. So here we go right here. Look at this slide right here, guys. Read that. Read that to yourself, that is. It's a measure right here. Oops. Okay. It's a measure which shows the percentage of data at or below a given value. And our given value is actually the fare. So let's go back. So can someone interpret that? Sixty-one percent of the something, something, something. <laughs> um, sixty-one percent of uh, uh, sixty-one percent of her like travels or whatever are the fares. Um, yeah, yeah, her like travel fares or whatever. Yeah, are either twenty-five, fifty, or lower. Very Next well. Say, say it one more time, please. Uh, 60, 61% of her travels are either $25.50 or lower. Okay, so 61 about, so we're going to say approximately, so 61% of the fares, the travel fares, okay, the, the fares, we're talking about, because all these are fares, so 61% of the fares are um, 2550 what were those key words that you said at 2550 or what? You, Jiran, you said a couple key words there. Below? Right. So are at 2550, I forgot a word in there, so let me stick a word in there. Are at 2550 or below? Okay. Or below. Those are the key words. So it's either at 2550 or below. Not exactly at, we don't have 61% exactly at 2550. We have 61% of the fares are at 2550 or below. So it gives you a, uh, an indication of where most of the fares are. You know, we're talking about 61% of them. Now question B is similar. So question B says, what's the percentile rank for 29 or 2590? Mm, so that's different. So let's switch colors here. Let's go, let's find 2590. 2590 in the tables here. And here's the percentile rank, 0 0.91, 0 0.991. So can someone else take that one? Not J. Ron, someone else. We got, we have a percentile rank of 0 0.991. So you have to convert that to a percentage and then you need to interpret it. 91%. Keep going. 91% um, of the fares are equal to or below 95.90 or 25.90. Very good. Say it one more time, please. That was good. 91% of fares are equal to or below 25.90. Okay, very good. So let's write that out. Okay, so about 91% of the fares are at or below. $25.90. So those are the key words, at or below. So most of the fares, I mean, 90, 91% is a lot. It's a, it's a high measure of all the fares are at or below $25.90. Okay, and then the third question, part C, says, uh, based upon your answers, part A and B, and that way, hopefully you guys have a better understanding of A and B. Which fare would represent, or excuse me, which fare would have a percentile rank of 70%? Okay, so let's, which one of the decimals in there on the last column is the closest to 70%? I mean, 694. That's right. So let's, let's focus in on that. So let's see here and let's pick a different color. So 0.694, and that refers to this fare here. Who just spoke to me, please? I did. John. Uh, 
Oh, Jonathan. Yeah, always give me first name. So, because I have to, <laughs> I'm still getting to know you guys. It's not like we're in class here and, uh, you know, I can see you right in front of me. So, Jonathan, can you interpret that? Okay. I mean, we got, we know what the answer is, but just, can you say it in words what's oh. going on right there? Okay, so seven, about 70% of the travel fares are at $25.75 or below. Very good. Thank you very much. So about 70% of the fares okay, are at uh, $25. Oops, 75 cents. Uh, are at $25.70 or below. The, you know, the answer is 2575. That's the key, but I just wanted to have them explain it. Okay, very good. Let's pause here. Talk to me. Are there any specific questions on what we've done so far? Believe it or not, that was, that encapsulates, like, you know, covers pretty much everything that was talked about in the lesson. Let's pause here and reflect. If you have either method questions or procedural questions, like uh, Charlize brought up something earlier that was, uh, she thought about it a different way and she was correct in thinking uh, uh, or calculating something in a different way, uh, then you got to speak up. Um, speaking of that, uh, if we were to use that way, where you just divide by the, the, like the 2590, which would, excuse me, that's an example. But yeah, if we were to buy by that, like if we were to use that same method for homework or something like that, it wouldn't like get points deducted or anything, right? Oh no, no. Well, I don't, there sometimes there's more than one method, and it doesn't matter to me what method you choose. It just has to be valid. So, uh, what she said earlier, it was valid. So go go for it. If that makes more sense to you, then do it. Okay, thank you. Good question. Anybody else? Okay, then let's uh, transition. And let me uh, go ahead. Sorry, are we gonna go over the like one, two, three? <laughs> sure. Okay, so because <laughs> you brought that up earlier, so talk to me, Jonathan. Which one do you want to discuss? Okay, uh, for the first one, number two, number two A, I think. I, like when I was trying to find the relative frequency, I, like I kind of messed up. I got like totally different stuff. Okay, so okay, we need uh, in order to answer your questions, we need we need the actual table. So, did you calculate all the cumulative frequencies and the relative frequencies so you can answer the number two questions? Yeah, I put in the. I know the cumulative frequency. The, so the first one I got it was twelve. Okay, so you know what? Let's uh, let's just go ahead and write out the values. So go ahead and uh, start talking. Okay, so first one twelve, uh, and then second one is twenty nine. Keep going. And then forty three, fifty, fifty five, and fifty nine. Very good. Okay, and then did you calculate the relative frequency? Uh, yeah, I got, uh, so the first one I got 0 0.203. Keep going. And then 0 0.492. 0 well, you're, you're, uh, that's relative cumulative. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. So okay. just do relative right now. No, that's why I made my mistake, I think. I got in, yeah. Okay, so, so first of all, let's see here, the, um, this represents your total. So what you were just giving me there was relative cumulative. Let's just write down the relative frequencies for each one. So for the first one, it's 12 divided by 59, which is 0 0.203. The next one's gonna be 29 divided by 59 uh, and so on. So 29, you know, 29 divided by 59. Recalculate. I got, I got 0 0.492. Yeah, on my calculator. Uh, let me just check that. So 29 divided by 59. Yeah, okay. Okay, keep going then. 
Okay. Uh, and then point uh, seven two nine. Oh, okay. Hang on for a second. This, yeah, you're you're giving me, you're taking the community, and then uh, relative frequency. I'm sorry, you got. We got to take these numbers: twelve, seventeen, and so. Uh, okay. So you know what? Let's go back. So let's take seventeen. I'm sorry, seventeen divided by uh, fifty-nine. So seventeen divided by fifty-nine. What are you calculating there? Because you're giving me relative cumulative. Yeah. So. Okay. I got 0.288. Ah, there we go, there we go. So we have to use these numbers here. Okay. So what's 14 divided by 59? Uh, 0.237. Now, now we're talking. Okay, so keep going. What's seven divided by 59? 0.119. There you go. And we got a few more here. So five divided by 59, 0. 0. 0. 0.085. And then 0. Uh, six eight, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now the let's go back. Which one did you have a question on? Two A, B, or C? Well, it's just because so I, I got messed up on the chart, and that's why I couldn't like answer the questions. But now right. I know how to I know how to do it because you explain it like the chart. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then let me give it to anybody else. Does anybody else need help on their work? I asked you guys to try the first few. And if you didn't do one, two, and three, or didn't try it like he did, then I encourage you guys to always try the first few, get a head start like I request. And then when you come to the meeting here, you can, you can ask questions like Jonathan did there. He, we, we figured it out and he's gonna fix it from there. And then all he has to do is fix a few things, probably answer the questions easily, I'm assuming, Jonathan, and then go from there. Um, are we talking about the, the one, two, and three from one dash two or from one dash one? Oh, we're talking about one dash two. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's right. Yeah, so um, is that was your, you had to watch that lesson uh, the previous day? Yeah, I remember that. Okay. So if you haven't tried one, two, and three, you just have a few th few more things to do uh, later on today. Oh no, I already did them. I just didn't know which ones you guys were talking about because I went, I, I hadn't seen these pages, but I couldn't find the graph y'all were on. But I see it now. Okay. Does anybody else have any uh, questions or concerns any, on anything? I have one more question. Yeah. For number three, for three D. Oh, no, no, sorry, 3E, like when it says, like, find the median of park visitors. Yeah, so on that one, the median, you have to reorganize your, your data. So did you order um, the data set, like in the, in the attendance set, like in the second column right there? Did you order that from low to high first? Yes. Yeah, isn't it like the, the one, like, 17.3 million, like, like that one, like the one in the middle, the middle column. Uh, there's this is an even data set. There's six data. There's six values, and when you have uh -huh. a number of values, you have two in the middle. Oh yeah, okay, I got it. So, do you remember what to do when you have two in the middle? Yeah, you just order it. And, oh yeah, so you add them together and then divide it by two. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you simply average them. Okay, so good job. Yeah. If it was odd, there would be a middle number, but if it's even, you always have to take the two in the middle and average. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell you guys are thinking about this and and really giving giving it a shot. So that's really good to see. So in the future, I could always go back to the prior lesson. I could do that if you want to. If you still have questions on the prior, uh, but I usually focus in on the current lesson. You know that we're working on. Spend most of our time on that. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. It's not something like really heavily math related. It's just on how you might want us to answer one. For number two B, uh, it says which ticket prices have a relative frequency greater than zero point two and less than zero point three. I put my answers, but I didn't know if you wanted the numbers or just like the spots they were. Because I just put the numbers they were. For say like if it wasn't like the six spot, I would have been like number six and number four or something. Okay, so in respect to that one, um, I would expect 
on 2B just to list the, the prices, which, which prices are between, or which prices have a relative frequency between 0.2 and 0.3. So which prices would, would you select if that was the case? Uh, well, you want me to say the answer? Yeah, I mean, just to, just to make sure. Okay, well, I put number one and three. Which I guess, I guess the numbers for them would be 0.24 and 0.28. Yeah, it would be, well, it would be, so these guys, right, these right here, these decimals here are between 0.2 and 0.3, right? Yes. So wouldn't it be these three uh, prices here, 39, 45, 55? Would you agree with oh. that? Oh, oh, okay, I see, I see. Yeah. So I'm saying $39, uh, $45, and the last one would be 55. Would you agree with that or disagree? I believe disagree. Do you agree with that? I mean, do you, do you, do you follow me here? That these, these ticket prices have relative frequencies between 0.2 and 0.3? Yes. Okay. Wait. Well, Wait, are you talking about the um, 0 0.085 and that 0 0.068 too? No, those are less than 0.2. The yeah, question those ones are. Yeah, which ones are? So this says for mine, I had, I had to make a relative uh, frequency chart or whatever. And so I ended up using percentage. I didn't, I didn't use the uh, cumulative frequency part. Oh, well, you just, it says relative frequency and I have them right here. So I'm just picking the prices that have a relative, not relative cumulative, just relative frequency that is between 0.2 or two tenths and three tenths. And the other ones, 0.119 and 0 0.08 and 0 0.068, all those are less than 0.2. Jay Ron, are we good with that or not? I think so. My thing is for number two, for the second one in the row, because, yeah, for the second one in the row, it, um, I ended up with 0.34 as, like, the relative frequency. And so I didn't include that one. Oh, well, then you, did you divide 29 by 59 instead of 17 by 59? Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, also, so... Yeah? Yeah, you have to use the, the, the frequency numbers, 12, 17, 14, 7, the ones in the second column, not the third column. Uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was all. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. All right. Well, good discussion. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let me see. We did number three is similar to number six, you guys. So number three is an important one. You have to calculate the relative frequency, the cumulative frequency, and the relative cumulative frequency. So you got to set up a table there. So relative frequency here, and then the cumulative frequency, and then you have to do the relative cumulative. There's two ways to do that. We talked about, and Charlize brought that up. So this is a big problem here too and that you have to complete the table here and add in order to answer the question. So you guys gotta take what we went over on number six and apply it to number three. So refer to number six on this one, if you like. Refer to number six. So I'm not gonna do this one with you. You guys can work on this uh, later if you haven't already done so. And then number four, Number four, you just have to take what you know and fill in the blanks here by knowing how to get the, you know, each one. And I'm talking about these things right here, relative frequency and cumulative frequency and then the percentile rank. So you need to finish that up. Um, and then let me see, number five. Number five is a algebraic one, fairly simple, straightforward. Now listen, number five is algebraic. So on our, in our next session here, if you have questions on number five, we can talk about this in our next session, but I want you to try it. Okay, so try number five and then remind me on, uh, what day is our next session? Tuesday, right? Is it Tuesday? Today's Thursday, Tuesday.
Yeah. So um, you can ask questions on Tuesday if you need help on that one. That's an algebraic one. We did number six, and we're going to skip number seven. I know in the directions online in Canvas it says to do one through seven, but just go ahead and make a little note. And we already accomplished number six. Okay. Any questions on what you guys need to do in the second hour? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys the hour. I'm talking about from 1.30 to 2.30 to finish your work and, and then submit it on Canvas. Um, I always suggest when I do this to, uh, instead of taking a break and like go do something else and blow up your homework, I would highly suggest that you guys do it now because everything's fresh in your mind, number one, and it's going to be a whole lot easier to tackle a new problem, like number three is a big one, if you do it now versus later. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me on that. Okay, it's, it's important. You gotta study properly. Right now is a really good time. Uh, so if you have additional questions, you can stick around and ask me. It could be tech questions, anything. Uh, just stay around. But for right now, you're free to go and get started on the rest of your work. Uh, good job today. There was a lot of good discussion, a lot of good dis uh, questions of you guys and then i'll see you on the next tuesday in our next session and we'll go over this again if we need to and like i said you're free to go unless you have a, uh, more questions you can stick around and talk to me personally okay so you guys have a good day and uh proud of you guys good job so we Thank skipped you. seven yes sir okay so just make a little note of that damien yes jonathan no i was just saying thank you oh you're welcome sir all right have a good one bud good job Anybody else have a question for me or need some help on anything? Uh, I have a, oh, you can go first. Okay, I had a question on 3D. Okay. Uh, because me, it's asked. Let me go to it here, hang on. Give me a second here, let me go to it. Okay, uh, here we go. Now I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay, because on the answer sheet, you, it was 17.8 million, but it was asking for the average monthly. So I was just wondering how you got 17.8 million. Mm. So good point there. So let me think about this for a second. So we have, uh, what is the average monthly number of visitors in millions attending the theme park over the six year period? And those are, those are yearly numbers. So So were you thinking that you would take that and divide it by 12? Is that what you're saying? Um, well, I um, multiplied 6 by 12, and then I divided that number by 106.87 to get that average monthly. Yeah, so, yeah, you could do it that way, too. Um, so you can take you get an average yearly and then divide by 12, or you can take six times 12 or 72 months in, in that many years and divide by that. Um, let me think about that for a second here, because I, I took uh, the sum, which is 106.87 uh, million total, and then divided that by six to get the average yearly, but it's asking for the average monthly. Hmm. Yeah, you know, a good point. You know, I, I, I don't know why. Uh, they came up with that. I'm gonna have to think about that one. Um, because I agree with you. Because the average monthly that I came, or excuse me, the average yearly that I came up with is I took the sum, 
which is 106.87 and divided it by six, because there were six years from, from 09 to 2014, which is 17.8 million, but that should be representing the average yearly. Yeah. Not monthly. So why not just divide that by, what'd you get for 17.8 divided by, or what'd you get your number S? Let me, let me calculate. Uh, I got 1.5 million per month. Yeah, so 17.8 divided by 12. Yeah, that's 1.5. So 1.5 average per month. I would go, you know, I don't understand why it's not that either. Um, let me let me think about that for a little bit. I, 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 I'm I thinking that I agree with you on that, but I will keep thinking about it and double check that value, okay? Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking that's it. Anything else while you're at it? Uh, no. So, Melina, you're showing me that you're actually using the answer set to check your work. I'm proud of you. That is good. Anybody else, you guys? Um, you said you were going to help me figure out how to get into the Canvas class. Mm. So you, you have not? Oh, did you just shift over here? Yeah. Okay, so you just added the class, right? Yeah, that today. Okay. And so they have not added the, the financial algebra period three to your canvas yet? No. Oh boy. Okay, so you know what I need to do? I'll make a note of that, uh, Priscilla. And I will, okay. I'll call school when we're done. Let me make note of this. And let me write down your name too. Uh, you're on infinite campus, but you're not in canvas yet. So I will call school and find out what's going on. And if I can do it manually and add you in, I will do it or have them do it. I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. And then I'll get the book for the class tomorrow. They won't, they're, the books are, they, well, they may have a few, but get the student workbook. Okay. And I also um, printed off a few copies of the notes for everybody and left them in the library too. So ask for the notes for the course from the librarian and ask for the student workbook. The student okay, workbook. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? Um, I had a question. Like, I was running the process for F and G, uh, for number three. Okay. So let me see. So F. What is the percent of the total number of visitors attended in 2014? So the percent. Oh, okay. So. Percent of the total number of viewers, I should bring up the. Okay, so what we need to do. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so we need to. I don't have the the table up here, so let me grab the table, uh, the finished table here. So let me switch here because I don't have all the numbers up here, so it's kind of hard for me to talk about it. So let me just bring this up. No, you're good. Okay, so here, let me go to number, this is number three, so let me go back to number three. Oh, here we go. Okay, so Charlize, did you, did you work on the table as I did up here? Um, yeah, I did. Okay, so let's, which, which one did you have a question on? On F, you said? Yeah, F and G, but if I know how to do F, I could probably do G. Okay, so let's let's read F. So using the chart above, the table that I that I worked on up here, what percent of the total number of visitors in two thousand fourteen? So, um, oh, so are you basically just moving the decimal? Well, you you want to take the yeah, you want to take the um, oh, it's right up here. Let me highlight it. So here's the percent or the the. Percent of the total is the, is the relative frequency, so it's 0.18, and then I just took 0.181 and then you know converted to percentage. That's all I did. Oh, okay. That that's a lot easier than I thought. And then and then on G, it's kind of the same thing too. I I took the decimals for the the years 09, 10, and 11. Okay. You see the point at the bottom here, the 0.162, and I took all those instead of the actual percentages. I just took the decimals, added them uh, added them up, and then converted to a percentage afterwards. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Anything else? 
Okay. How about Preston, Michael, or Savannah? What do you guys What do you guys need? Uh, I was just saying to listen to the questions because I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> okay. Did you, Preston? Did you watch the video? I haven't seen it yet. No. Oh, that's why you're you're struggling. If you you have to watch the video first, um, I will open that. I, I think I opened it back up already. So go back into Canvas. Uh, listen to it because it you know it goes over over everything and in detail. Uh, your approach of going right into the lesson without watching the video is the hard way to do it. Uh, <laughs> I I would not uh, attempt that again uh, because things only get harder as we go, and you have to. Um, it's kind of like missing class, like in regular school. Have you ever missed class a few days and then go back and like you're totally lost? Okay. Yeah. That's basically what happens here. So you miss the video. So go to go back and watch the video. And then this stuff will make a hell of a lot more sense. Cool. Okay. So I'll go back to the canvas and make sure it's still open. So you can uh, go ahead and listen to it. Thanks. You bet. Michael, what do you need, bud? Uh, number two, I think it's like C. Okay, it's the number two C. Okay, it says interpret the relative frequency of an $88 ticket. Uh, for the $88 ticket price in terms of percent. Okay. Yeah. Um, say again. Oh, I was just saying, I don't okay. need like a pressure on how to do that. Okay. So look at the table. Can you see my screen? Look at the table. Let's find find eighty eight an eighty eight dollar ticket price. It's right here. See in green. Maybe get a little bit bigger here. Okay, and uh, it has a relative frequency of point zero eight five right here. Five divided uh, by five. It's point eight five. Point zero eight five. Excuse me. And then when you change your decimal to percent, you multiply it by 100, so it times it by 100, and now shift the decimal place two places to the right. You can even try that on your calculator if you like. If you enter in uh, 0 0.085, so let's just do it, 0 0.085, and you multiply it by 100. And it turns into uh, 85? Oh, 8.5. 8.5. I forgot there's two. So you just want to uh, shift the decimal right to two places, and then you will mm -hmm. complete the decimal two percent. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Anything else? Buddy? Um. I can't. I can't say like now, but I'll probably have a question some other time. Okay. Um, I'll just try my best. You can always call me back, like you and Preston. Uh, you, you guys are, are hooked up on Remind, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you yeah. can communicate with me directly through Remind. People send me messages every day throughout the day and ask me questions. So if you have other questions on this over the next few days, uh, if you want a, a little private meeting uh, to do a little bit of mathematics like this, between now and Tuesday, because that's a long time, right? Uh, you can always yeah. call, and we can say, okay, let's meet at 5 p.m. for you know 10 minutes, and we can do that. So work on a little bit more. Uh, go back to the video if you need to listen to it again, and then I will uh, correspond with you over the next few days. Uh, through the Remind app, and then just keep on trying, keep on working at it, and then let me know what, what help, uh, what you need. Okay. Um, I think, wait. Okay, your, your audio is kind of going in and out. Are you good? Yeah. 
Okay, so um, hang on. Let's see here. When you like called on me, I was like having a word with it. And so <laughs> I was like rushing to like try and make sure you know I was having internet issues and I got the answer out. So um yeah, I know. So it's 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 probably difficult for you listening to me taking notes and trying to interpret when the the communication's not doing too well. Am I correct on that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so hang in there. Hang in there and uh, like I said, give me a call anytime. Um Okay, uh, through, uh, through, the, through the Remind app, I mean, um, not a call, but you can message me anytime and then we could, we could uh, do some more work over the next few days. Okay. Okay, you guys have a good one, you guys. So I will see you uh, pretty soon. Uh, okay, thanks for, uh, thanks for explaining it to me a bit better. All right, and again, Preston, go, go to Canvas, open it up, and uh, make sure you watch your videos before our sessions. Okay, buddy? <laughs> All right, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you soon. You too, bye. All right, bye-bye now.